Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to show you how to harden a FortiGate device. Hardening a FortiGate device from a security perspective, is not going to make the device unhackable, but, it will shrink the attack surface a lot. Many of you might wonder, how can you restrict access to your FortiGate? You don't want external or unauthorized users to be able to access the device. And we are going to do just that. So stay tuned and follow this video guide on hardening a FortiGate, and of course, hit that subscribe button and like this video too. Here is our demo FortiGate. It is a virtual machine running evaluation license, which means, it has limited functionality. But for the purposes of this video, it will work just fine. The first thing that you might notice here, is that I use the default HTTPS port for web access. That is port 443. This is known information to the outside world and it should be changed to something else. Let's change it then. So, log on to the device and go to System, Settings. Over here, you will see a bunch of different settings and ports. To change the HTTPS port, simply change the number 443 according to your needs. Let's make it 6443. Click Apply to accept the setting. Now, if you check on the URL, you will see that it already uses port 6443 for HTTPS, and the device now is asking to relog. Use your credentials to log in and go to System, Settings. Now we will change the rest of the ports. For HTTP port I will use 60080. For SSH port, I will use 60022. And for Telnet, I will use 60023. Another thing that is recommended by Fortinet Security Rating Service, is that you should set an idle timeout to 10 minutes. In order to prevent multiple sessions for each administrator, disable the allow concurrent sessions. This is a new setting, implemented in 7.4.3. Now, further down to our list is the password policy. Do not use simple passwords like 1234 or admin. Use a policy instead and force it every time you change your password. Just click on the admin box and set the new parameters. I will leave minimum length as default, but you can change it according to your needs. So, minimum length is 8. Minimum number of new characters. I will set this to 1. Turn on the character requirements and set all requirements to 1. Of course, you can set these according to your preference. Next, disable the allow password reuse setting, and enable the password expiration. Set this to 180 days or to whatever you want. Usually 180 days is more than enough. Another thing that is considered basic security hardening, is to delete the default admin account. If someone tries to log into your device, he already has half of the login information. And that is the username. So let's get rid of that. Simply go to System, and then click Administrators. Go to Create New, and select, Administrator. Set the new username. I will use IT Superhero with three capital letters. Of course, you can add numbers or symbols here. No restrictions. Now, set the password according to the password policy we configured in the previous step. If the new password fits the password policy, then all check marks will be green. Next, set the admin profile to super admin. Click OK for now and we will come back here. Now log out from the device and re-log with the new admin account. Let's delete the default admin account now. You can simply go to System, Administrators and select the admin account. Then click Delete at the top or you can use the command line. Open the command line window and type, config, system, admin and hit enter. Then type, delete admin. And that should delete the default admin account. In some older versions of the OS, you had to rename the admin account first in order to remove it. So keep that in mind. Now let's go back to the administrator account. We will now use the restrict login to trusted host setting. What this means, is that the device will allow login only from trusted hosts or networks. I will add 192.168.1.024 as my first trusted host network. This is my private network and I want to be able to access the device from any IP within that network. Next, I will add my office public IP. For this demo, I will use 1.2.3.4-32. This way the device, can only be accessed by these addresses. No other network or address is allowed to access the device. What do you think of these tips so far? Let us know in the comments below. We really appreciate and value your opinion about this video. So, what are you waiting for? 
Hit that subscribe button and give this video a huge like as we move forward to our next tip. Another thing to do in order to harden any FortiGate, is to limit access to the external interfaces. Let's check this device. Go to Network, Interfaces and find your public facing interface. In this case it's port 1, but on a hardware device, it is WAN 1. Select it and click Edit. Look at the administrative access. These are ways that you can access the device from the WAN interface. If you really need HTTPS or HTTP, or ping enabled on that interface, keep the relevant check enabled. Else disable any type of access that you don't need. I will disable ping and HTTP, as I don't want these enabled. Having ping disabled, is a great trick because it lets the attackers know that this public IP is not responding. Therefore, most of them, will assume that there is nothing on that IP. A great way to trick them. And also, a great way to support us is to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Next one on our list, is the great feature that comes by the name Local in Policy. Local in Policies, control inbound traffic that is destined to a 40 gate interface. This is to let the firewall know what to do when an access request is coming to an interface. Either to respond or to ignore that request. These requests may vary from HTTPS or SSH. Whatever it is, the firewall will know exactly what to do. Local in policies can be configured via command line interface. Let's create one for example. First of all, we need to create address objects. Go to policy and objects and then click addresses. Click on create new. I will name this MGMT underscore IP10. I have connected the WAN interface to my internal network. The address will be 192.168.1.10. Take a note of the address name somewhere. Now, open the command line window from the top right corner. Type, config, firewall, local in policy. Then type, edit 0 to add a new entry. Set interface port 1. This is a virtual device but any hardware device has its WAN port named WAN 1 by default. Set the source address with this command. Type set source address MGMT underscore IP10. This is the address object we created earlier. Of course you can add an address group here. Set the destination address to all. Next, set the service to ping. Now, set the action to accept, and, set the schedule to always. Type show to get the current local in policies. We can see that in rule number 1, there is an action to always accept pings, from MGMT underscore IP10, to any destination. Let's block now the rest of the addresses. We need to create a set of rules to accept ping only from the desired addresses, and block everything else. So, type edit 0. Set interface to port 1 again. This time, set the source address to all. Again, set the destination to all. Now, set the action to deny. Set the service to ping, and finally set the schedule to always. Type next, and then type, show. Now we can see two local in policies. Remember that FortiGate operates in a way from top to bottom. So, these rules will apply in order. The first rule allows ping on the WAN interface from the source we set earlier, and the second one blocks ping from all other IPs. In order for this set of rules to work, we have to re-enable ping on the WAN interface. Go to Network, Interfaces and edit the WAN interface. Enable the ping again. Let's see the local in policies in action now. I have two virtual machines here for this. The left one is using DHCP and has got the address 192.168.1.28. The right one is using static IP and has the address 192.168.1.10. Now let's ping the WAN interface from both. The left one is not getting a reply but the right one does. That's exactly what we have done with the local in policies. Remember, that you should always review your rules and keep notes about how you can access your devices. Attack types evolve every day. These methods are a great way to eliminate most of the attacks but you can never be 100% safe. So keep an eye out about zero day attacks and vulnerabilities. And if you found value in this video, support us by hitting the subscribe button and like this video. See you soon.